Welcome back guys. This is the second half of my active blend control build part 8 or 9 or something of Project Barocca. Anyway, this is my little uh, buffer board. It is almost complete. I just have to decide on the uh, input impedance for both sides of the circuit and also what capacitive loading I want to give to that neck pickup that I wound a couple of episodes ago. Um, just to get it sounding a little more kind of old school and fendery. Um, the first thing I have to do though is to rewire the bridge pickup into parallel mode because that's how stingrays are and were in the 70s. Um, so that's the sort of sound I'm going for. This guy is actually kind of hardwired and or glued in place um, in series mode so it might be easier said than done but uh, let's get into it. some stuff. I've rewired the bridge pickup into parallel mode. It was a bit of a faff really. Um, it actually had not just hot glue holding the coils into the cover but also some kind of heavy duty paste glue of some sort over the top and I ended up overcooking it slightly. I'm a bit annoyed with myself if I'm honest but uh, that slightly distorted pickup cover will be hidden once the pickup's back in its route so it's not too bad. I've also removed the existing blend control and the volume control and I've wired a new volume control onto the output of the preamp. The other thing I've done is I've wired in a little temporary pickup selector toggle switch and that's so I can directly switch from one pickup to the other because I want to work out whether I need to add a little bit of gain to one side or the other of my active blend control. Uh, there is a couple of ways you can do that. Of course you can use electronic test equipment. Um, but really, I normally just do this sort of thing by ear. Um, sounds to me like it needs, say, 3 to 4 dB of boost, that neck pickup, because it's still a little bit under the bridge pickup. The other way you can do it is with a DAW. just tried to play that as evenly as possible recording first one pickup and then switching to the other and we'll just see how much um, I have to adjust that so let me line these two halves of this track up I've got the pickups adjusted to the exactly the same heights and I've just tried to play as evenly as possible on both of those if I adjust the gain on the neck pickup side it looks like I can get it about even visually with 4dB. I can also audition that and have a look at the meters. Let me just kill the drums. And I can just look at the meters here. I could even adjust them both until they're just peaking into say the yellow uh, and then see what the difference in gain is. I could also, uh, for example, I could also pan them hard left and right. Um, and compare them that way or use headphones and compare them that way. Um, but it looks like I need about 4 dB of gain on the neck pickup. So how do you add a little bit of gain to one side of the active blend control? Well, if you check out the PDF I posted on my website, you'll see this version of the schematic, and over here on the right hand side, you'll see that info. I think I mentioned this in the last episode, uh, but if you want to add some gain, uh, you need to use a resistor between the output and the inverting input, and you also need to add a resistor between the inver inverting input and the voltage bias, and it's the relationship of those two resistors that set the gain ratio, or the voltage ratio, which gives us the gain. For 4 dB, the voltage ratio will be 1.6, and if RG2 is 10K, if you do this maths, RG1 has to be 
6K. Uh, the closest I've got to 6K is 6.8K resistors, um, but that will be absolutely fine. It just means I'll end up, I think, with 4.5 dB of gain for the next for the neck pickup, and that will work just fine. So um, what we have to do is put our RG1 in here, and it was uh, 6.8K, and we also need our RG2 going to the V bias, and this is 10K. So that's the next thing I'm going to add to our little circuit. These two resistors, and of course the wire link between pins 1 and 2 for the bridge pickup. So there we go, here's our little circuit board. That's our 6.8K resistor standing up on its end. You might be able to just see the wire link that I put in between pins one and two. For wire links, I normally use this stuff. It's tinned single strand wire. I think it's 0.7 mil in diameter. I still usually give it a little rub with some steel wool before I do solder it. It can kind of tarnish up and you'll get a cleaner solder joint if you do that. If you don't have any of this stuff, you can just save one or two of the snipped off resistor legs and use them for your wire links. It works just fine. Um, and I've also put in RG2 uh, on this side, that little guy, and it's standing up on its end as well. That's our 10K RG2 resistor. So the next thing I'm going to do is have a look at the bridge pickup. A few weeks ago I had a 78 Stingray on the bench and I ran some tests on the pickup and also the preamp and the pickup feeding the preamp. Um, from memory it had uh, I think a 10 kilohertz um, resonant frequency and uh, about 1.9 K ohms of resistance and, uh, and so on. And it looks on the surface that this pickup now that it's wired in parallel is going to be very close to those specs. Um, so uh, let's have a look. So I'm just going to disconnect the pickups from the input of the preamp. And I'll tack this wire in instead for our pickups and I can switch from one pickup to the other and I don't have to take them out of the base. And I can just take the earth from the jack with this test lead. Well, it looks like the resonant frequency of this bridge pickup is 8.6 kilohertz. I was hoping it'd be closer to 10 kilohertz, but um, unless I rewind this pickup, there's nothing much I can do about it, to be honest. So I'm gonna run with it as is and we'll see how it sounds. I've got the Stingray pickup directly feeding the one meg input impedance on the scope. And not surprisingly, there's a huge resonant peak right at eight and a half kilohertz. So what I'm gonna do is use a 250K linear pot as a variable load impedance across the pickup and see if we can tame that peak. So now I've got the pot set to 90K ohms and yeah, this looks about right. What I'm chasing here is a resonant peak of about 3 dB around that uh, eight and a half kilohertz region. This looks very similar to the treble response I got when I tested the uh, 78 Stingray pickup, albeit with a uh, slightly higher resonant frequency. Um, so I'm gonna run with this. So 90K ohms in parallel with one meg ohm, which is the input impedance of the scope, gives us a total impedance of 82k ohms and that just happens to be a preferred value from the E12 resistor series. So that's what I'm going to use for R1, an 82k ohm resistor. Let's move on to the neck pickup. So here's a sweep of the neck pickup and as expected uh, it's got the resonant peak at about 9 kilohertz or just under but I want to shift that down to about two and a half kilohertz because that's where the resonance of my 73P base was with cable capacitance in my myth busting tone caps video. Since I've got the drive coil and the scope all set up, I could just go through the caps in my box and find one that gets me there through trial and error. But um, since I wound the pickup myself um, just a couple of episodes ago, I know it's exact inductance and it's stray capacitance. So I can kind of shortcut that by using a resonant frequency calculator. So solving for capacitance, Hertz, Henry's uh, 2500 Hertz, 
and this pickup has 1.7 Henry's of inductance. It says we need a 2.4 nanofarad capacitor, but of course this pickup already has 190 picofarads of its own stray capacitance, so we can subtract that, and you're left with a 2.2 nanofarad cap. If you've got SPICE software, you can also make a simple model of the inductance, the resistance, and the, that stray capacitance, um, and then just let the software do all the tricky maths for you. Um, where are we? So there's our big old resonant peak at 9 kilohertz. And if I add a 2.2 nanofarad cap, we should see that shift down to, there you go, down to 2.5 kilohertz. So the next step is to tame that peak by reducing the load resistor. Um, I'm aiming for just a little bit of resonance, around about 3 dB I guess, just to give the pickup a little bit of character in that treble range. So it's just a matter of uh, reducing this load resistor. So now I can try those values with the actual pickup. Uh, let me see if I can find a 2.2 nanofarad cap. There's one. And I'll also set up this uh, load pot as well. So, as expected, that uh, cap has dropped us down to about 2.5 kilohertz for that resonant peak. And I've got the load pot on halfway, uh, but this still looks a little bit peaky for me, so I'm going to lower that resistance a little more. So this is looking about right. I've got a, about a 3 dB peak in that 2.5 kilohertz range. So now I just have to measure the pot resistance and then do my maths on its parallel resistance with the uh, one meg scope impedance. It's remarkable really, just adding a cap and a resistor and you get a completely different treble characteristic to the pickup. Oh, 90k ohms, <laughs> same as the other one. I promise you that wasn't planned, but it looks like both of our input impedance resistors are going to be 82k ohms. So now all I have to do is add those last couple of parts to my board, then wire it up with all different colours, um, put some heat shrink on it, and uh, put it in the base.
When you fire up a circuit like this for the first time, uh, make sure you've already tested um, all the wiring is correct and you've double checked all the parts and you've uh, checked all the soldering, obviously. Then I'd recommend testing its current draw. Um, the reason for that is that the meter will be in line with the battery. So if you do see something on the meter, you see an abnormal reading, then as soon as you take the probes off, uh, the circuit will switch off. Make sure you've got a jack in the plug if you've already wired it into the guitar. Um, that way the battery negative will be earthed and, this, and, and it will allow the circuit to switch on through your meter. I'd first test it without the op amp, especially if you're new to this. Um, you'll get something like 100 microamps around there for the, for the sort of raw circuit. Um, then you want to look up the data sheet on the particular op amp that you chose and find out what its current draw is. Um, the MC33178s uh, that I have been using, I think from memory they're around about a milliamp or just a little more than that. Um, and when I plug this guy in, with my meter, I got 1.2 milliamps, which is bang on. Obviously, you know, things don't always work the first time, and if it doesn't work, then the first thing to do is, well, don't panic. The second thing to do is double check all the obvious things. I've already mentioned the jack being plugged in. Make sure the battery connector is working properly. Make sure your meter's set to the right thing. Um, then you can go and triple check all of your wiring and everything else. If that doesn't fix it, maybe try swapping the op amp. Um, and then, honestly, if it was still not working for me, I'd be tempted um, with such a simple and small circuit like this, I'd be tempted just to make it again. Uh, it, it really doesn't take long to put together. But if you do want to try troubleshooting the circuit and removing parts, desoldering parts, testing them, then go for it. Um, <laughs> Troubleshooting electronics can be challenging, can be very frustrating, um, but ultimately it can be rewarding and you'll always learn something from it. In fact, you never stop learning with this stuff, to be honest. Um, anyway, let's see how it sounds. Well, the pickups seem pretty evenly matched. Um, And the blend works really evenly from one pickup to the other. There's a little bit of phase cancellation in the uh, low treble when both pickups are up, but uh, that's pretty normal for basses with two pickups that sense the strings in very different locations. Um, I think I'll grab my zoom and I'll get some direct recordings done uh, so we can compare the sound of the bass now to some recordings I made before I started modding. <laughs> Obviously there's a lot more to tone than just the resonant peak of your pickup coils, but um, let's just see how close I got to my old 73P. Well, I don't think I'll be selling this guy anytime soon, but um, I think I got pretty close. So there you go, active blend controls, check it out. It might be just the thing for your bass with your pickup choices. There's a couple of things I should say before I go. Firstly, if you watch the other part of this episode, you might have seen the board layout that I refer to actually change slightly um, from scene to scene. That's because I actually gave it a tweak um, as I was going along, and it is the new updated version of that layout. 
in the PDF on my website, so do check it out. Uh, the other thing I did, I've actually run a couple of extra wires from this as well, one from the uh, pin 8 of the IC for, our, for a 9 volt supply and also one from the bias voltage strip. At the moment those wires are just heat shrunk and tied off, but I'll use those in the next couple of videos because I'll be uh, designing and building a new uh, simple two band preamp for the base. Um, and there's no real reason to double up those uh, power supply components with the new circuit. So if making your own base preamp sounds like something you'd be interested in, hit subscribe and I'll see you then.